Analyzing Isobuzz log files can be a complex task. To make things easy, I will show you how to analyze log files with the passive mode in Canoe's virtual terminal for Isobuzz. Hello, my name is Mario Maase and I'm a software development engineer for the Canoe option Isobuzz. In this tutorial, I will show you how Canoe can be used to analyze an Isobuzz communication with the virtual terminal window. The virtual terminal in Canoe supports two operation modes. The default mode is the simulation of a fully functional virtual terminal. Here, the VT window actively participates in a bus communication. The second one is the so-called passive mode, which purposes to attach to the isobus without being actual part of the communication, but reading and analyzing the traffic. Canoe's VT in passive mode reflects the current state of the observed active VT to the user, including the data mask, the visualization of user interaction, as well as the hardware properties and the active working set. Additionally, the page object pool lets the user navigate through all the elements in the object pool and prints detailed information about each element and its state. Since in passive mode, the VT window listens to the bus communication but does not participate in it, it is also possible to analyze a log file instead of a live communication. In the next couple of minutes, I will show you three different scenarios for the VT passive mode with either a complete or incomplete log of the bus communication. We start with the probably simplest use case where we have the complete recording of the bus communication, including the upload of an object pool. First, we need to activate the passive mode in the VT window. For that, we select the virtual terminal and switch to the configuration page. Check enable passive mode and auto detect address of the VT. Leave the third option unchecked since we only have one VT in our recorded data. On the bottom, we enable the synchronization of the active working set. This option makes sure we see the same working set as the user. Then we select the data mask page and start the measurement. The VT window extracts the object pool transferred with the object pool transfer message and displays it on the data mask page. The contents of the current user data mask of the active VT and all user interactions are constantly reflected there. If we need detailed information about a specific control, we can use the right mouse button to jump to the element of the object pool page. The next page, Working Set Details, shows properties of the selected working set, device name, VT version and address. While the measurement is running, the VT window also analyzes, amongst others, the messages VT status, language command, get memory response, get hardware response to obtain properties of the active VT like the resolution, the number and size of the soft keys, the language and the units, or features like touchscreen or adjustable volume and the audio output. All these properties are displayed on the configuration page. This use case relies on a complete log file, which makes things easy but is rather unusual. More likely, you will face the situation where an implement was connected to the real virtual terminal in a previous session and stored its object pool. Thus, the log file of the current session contains only the load version command and the transmission of the object pool is completely missing. In this case, we cannot see any content in the VT's data mask. When we start a measurement, we can see only two of our three working sets were filled with data. So we have to make the missing object pool available for the VT window. To do this, we place the corresponding object pool in a IOP file with the name of the version label in the directory we have configured for the versions under version management. In our case, it is VT data. The version label can be taken from the corresponding load version command. Simply locate the load version command in the information panel in the virtual terminal. Alternatively, you can locate it in the trace window by either using a column filter or searching for load version in the search bar. Copy the suitable object pool in the directory VT data and rename the object pool file to match the version label of the load version command. Then we replay the recorded log file again. Now the data mask of the working set shows up which tells us that the virtual terminal window could load the missing object pool. The last use case even goes a little further. If we are out of luck, the can logger missed the initialization phase containing address claim, working set master and the object pool transfer messages of our implement. For this use case, Canoe 17 comes with a new mechanism that allows the user to manually set up the missing information. The VT then reassembles the incomplete log with the given data. We select one of the existing working sets from previous measurements. 
Alternatively, we can create an empty working set directly by clicking on Add Predefined Working Set in the context menu. Then we switch to the page Working Set Details. There we activate the checkbox Instantiate Predefined Working Set at Startup enter the address of the working set, and then define the IOP file that contains the corresponding object pool. That's all. We repeat these steps for each incomplete working set instance. Then we replay the recorded log file again. We see that the goal is achieved. The passive VT window shows the contents of the active virtual terminal, although a significant part of the communication is completely missing. And that's it! As simple as that. In this video, we learned how to use the passive mode of Canoe's virtual terminal window to reflect the active VT, including the data mask, visualization of user interaction, as well as hardware properties. Additionally, the passive VT can also be used to analyze a log file. However, depending on the completeness of the log, the VT window needs more or less additional information by the user. Thanks for watching. Hey, you're still there? Take a look around and watch our other tutorials on Canoe. And if you never want to miss another new video, you should seriously consider subscribing to our Tech Tutorial channel. Don't forget to hit the bell.